All right, there we go. So the plan, plan for today is 12.3 and 12.5. Probably only 12.3 will finish. We'll see. But we'll hopefully finish a lot of 12.5. Uh, 12.5 will be due next Thursday. No, that'd be Thanksgiving. Well, later. Let's just say later. See, see when we get it done. We're a week from Thanksgiving, huh? All right. So, did you guys finish up 12.2 okay? Is that section okay with all those um, arithmetic sequences and series? Because today, 12.3 will be very similar. It's just going to notch it up a level. Instead of arithmetic sequences and series, these are going to be geometric sequences and series. All right. Well, let's, um, let's dive in with the first thing they're saying there. They're giving us a formula. 4 to the n minus 1 over 2. And they, they want the common ratio and the first four terms. Oh, yeah. Let me grab it just a second. Have a seat anywhere you want. And, all right. So let's crank on through. So um, let's put in n equals 1. So can you take that formula and just plug in 1 first off? So the n for n, right? So that would be 4 to the 1 minus 1 over 2. 4 to the 0 over 2. What's anything to the 0 power? 1, right? Am I good? So n equals 1 is a half. That equal good? <laughs> that equal good. <laughs> that good? For there so far. Now plug in 2. So, so do plug in 2, 3, and 4. And then when you're done, try to find out what's causing the jump from term to term. So I've got to... All right, so um, how y'all doing on that? So let's plug in uh, 2. So plug in 2, we get 4 to the 1 over 2, get 2. Is that good for n equals 2? And then plug in 3, 4 to the 3 minus 1 over 2. 4 to the 2 over 2, 16 over 2, 8. And then plug in 4, and we get 4 to the 4 minus 1 over 2. 4 to the 3rd over 2, which is, what was that, 64 over 2? So 32. All right, so the number, so the sequence goes like this. The first one's a half, then comes 2, then comes 8, then comes 32. Good so far? So those are the first four terms. And so the question for us is what's going on from term to term? What's making a half become 2, and 2 become 8, and 8 become 32? Times them by 4, isn't it? We good with that? It's going times 4, times 4, times 4, isn't it? Everybody good with that? Half times 4 is 2, 2 times 4 is 8, 8 times 4 is 32. It's going times 4 every time. So that's called the common ratio. So the common ratio is 4, and then they want the first four terms, and we're done. Now, this one you can see in a little bit here. In a few minutes, they're going to get a more tricky, harder to see. What's, they're going to have like weird fractions and things, and be harder to tell what's happening from term to term. So let me give you another method to get it, even when it's not obvious. And that is, you can always take the second term over the first term. The second term and just divide it by the first term. That's why it's called the common ratio. You just take the ratio of second over first, so that would be 2 over a half. Or really, you can take any term divided by the previous. I could take third term over second. Anyway, what would I get if I took 2 over a half? I'm going to get the 4 again. Do you see that? If you took this half and you flipped it up, you would have 2 times 2 over 1. Remember, a fraction on the bottom flips up. 2 times 2 over 1. That's 2 times 2. That's 4. Sure enough, that, that's another way you can find the common ratio. So that makes sense? Just giving you another way. So it's called a common ratio because if you... See, if you took 8 divided by 2, you get the same thing, wouldn't you? You get 4. So you can take any term divided by the previous term. It is the ratio that's in common on that. In other words, it's what's being multiplied. So if you divide, you'll get that. That's what, that's what it's saying. All right. I'll keep moving. You all stop me if you want to talk. 
So the formula is 2 to the n over 3 power. It's kind of strange. Okay. Same thing. Put in 1, put in 2, put in 3, put in 4, and then find out what's happening from term to term. Just a second. So plug in one, plug in two, plug in three, plug in four. Right, how are we doing? So plug in 1, and we get 2 to the 1 third. There's really not a lot else to do with that, huh? Plug in 2, get 2 to the 2 thirds, plug in, you get the idea. So, so here we go. So it's 2 to the 1 third, 2 to the 2 thirds, 2 to the 3 thirds. So if you plug in 3, you get 3 thirds, and that's just 2 to the 1 or 2, huh? And then plug in 4, you get 2 to the 4 thirds. Good, good so far. There's the first four terms. Now... The question is, what's the common ratio? What's being multiplied by from term to term? By the way, you see these are uh, geometric sequences, meaning you're multiplying the same number. Everybody catching the difference? I mean, let me go back real quick and make sure I have made that clear. We're now in 12.3. We're talking about geometric sequences, which means you multiply from term to term instead of add and subtract. That was yesterday's or Tuesday's arithmetic, right? Arithmetic means adding, subtracting, doesn't it? If, you say, if a child is studying arithmetic, they're studying adding and subtracting. So arithmetic sequences add, subtract from term to term. Geometric, they multiply from term to term. That's what we're changing. Okay, anyway, getting back to here. So what's being timesed? Times what? From term to term. Can you tell? Yeah, we can just go ahead and do the method I was just showing you, yeah. Just take the second term divided by the first, huh? You can find the common ratio by taking second over first. Any term divided by the previous term, yeah. So let's take second over first. That will give me the R. That's how we find the R. And so we got 2 to the 2 thirds over 2 to the 1 third. Now, how do you do that? You all remember that? What do you do with those powers? Do you remember like X to the fifth over X to the third? What do you do? Subtract powers, huh? Same thing here. Two to same bases, two and two. Same bases, subtract powers. Two thirds minus one third is just one third. Two to the one third is the R. That's the common ratio, huh? Are we good there? Is that okay? Just divide second term over first term. Second term over first term. Second term over first term. Subtract powers. Questions on that? Am I good? Okay, so we have that formula, 9 to the n minus 1 over 5 to the n. It's the same thing, plug in 1, plug in 2, plug in 3, plug in 4, if you can find the common ratio. Okay, so plug in 1, get 9 to the 1 minus 1 over 5 to the 1. That's 9 to the 0 over 5. Anything to the 0 power is 1, so that's 1 fifth. 1 fifth is the first term. Now plug in 2. So 9 25ths is the uh, second term. Good. 
good so far. All right, plug in three. Nine squared over 125, so 81 over 125. How are we doing? Are we having fun this morning? You guys look like you're at the dentist. Is this torture? A little, a little torturous? Would you like a little Novocaine with this lecture this morning? I'm sorry. I always, I always feel like the dentist. You guys are paying me to do something you'd really rather I didn't do. It's kind of funny if you think about it for a minute. Mm. Sorry. Just every now and then I got to reflect. I know it's into the semester. You're like, we're tired, Mr. Heron. We want to be done. A couple more weeks. Home stretch. We're almost there. What do we got? Three weeks? Three more weeks of lecture. And then finals week. All right. So um, number four. N equals four now. So N equals four. So if you plug in four, put in four here, put in four there. So nine to the four minus one over five to the four, like that. That's nine to the third over some big 625. Nine to the third, what's that? 81, 729? So 729 over 625, like that. So that's the fourth term. Now we've got to find out like what's happening from term to term. So we got the four terms. So how do we figure out what's going on? What's the R? What's the ratio? What's being multiplied from term to term? What do I do? Going to divide, right? Yeah. Second term over first. So, which one's the second? Oh, this one. So, se second term right here over first term. So, it's going to be 9 twenty fifths over 1 fifth, like that. Is that good? And then grab this thing and flip it up. Let's give it a flip, right? Whenever you have fraction on the bottom. 9 25 times 5 over 1, like that. We go, and then she go, then 5 into 25, 5 times, so the answer is 9 fifths. That's the ratio, that's what's being multiplied by every time. By the way, um, we've done so many of these now, can you tell the ratio is always what's to the, to the n or n minus 1 or whatever power? Right? See how the 9 and the 5 are both have some kind of an n thing on them? So it's going to be 9 fifths. So if they give you a formula, the r is always whatever has some sort of an n thing on it. So everybody see that? Let's look back and make sure we see that. See right here? We had, um, well, that one's a little tricky. Because you might say, well, why isn't it just 2 there, Mr. Heron? Well, because really that's 2 to the 1 third raised to the n power. That's what that really is. That was a little tricky to see. This one, what, what has the n power on him? Only the 4. So what was the ratio? Only the 4. See, that's whatever has the n power on him. Um, right, because on that one, the 2 doesn't have an n power on him. All right. Let's keep moving. There we go. All right. No question? All right. So a equals 3, r equals negative 1. Um, you know what A is? A is the initial term. You see right here? I, I wish they would use A1. I don't know why they're suddenly not using A sub 1. That's what we always use for the first term, huh? But for whatever reason, they're just calling it by the name A now. But we should know. I'm going to put a little 1 here. This is A sub 1. This is the first term. They're saying it right here. Initial term. First term. So A sub 1, first term is 3. R is negative 8. So what they want me to do now is crank out some terms in this geometric sequence. So let's, so let's start with 3, because that's the first term, right? And then how do I find the second term? What am I going to do with that r? Multiply, huh? Yeah, because the ratio is what you, what you times by, yeah. So you go times negative 8. So 3 times negative 8? be negative 24. And then the next one, times negative 8 again. 
And that's getting too big for me. Calculator. Oh. I'm getting 192. And it's positive, isn't it? Because I took a negative 24 and multiplied by a negative 8, two negatives positive, right? Good so far? Let's keep going. So we're going to multiply yet again times negative 8. Would it help if I put parentheses? Times negative 8. And it's something big. I'm getting 1536. And this time it's negative 1536. Do you see how the signs change back and forth? Plus, minus, plus, minus. Why do they do that? Well, what, that's what happens when you repeatedly multiply by a negative number, huh? Because the first time, you know, positive 3 times negative is negative, but then when you go times negative again, it's back to positive, then it's back to negative, right? So whenever you're multiplying by a negative number, that makes the sign switch back and forth, doesn't it? One more step. Times negative 8 one last time here. Um, so that's... 12,288, 12, and it's positive, huh? Back to positive again. So here are the first five terms. Which one do they want? They want the fifth term. So, okay, there you go, guys. The fifth term. We found the fifth term. The terms get big really fast for geometric sequences, don't they? Because you're multiplying every time. So the nice thing is they won't make you go very far in this section. They won't ask you, like, what's the hundredth term? Because it's just way, way, way too big. It's already, you know, 12,000. We're only at the fifth term. So geometric, they'll usually only make you go four, five, or six terms. So you can kind of just do it by hand with a calculator. You know, you don't need some fancy formula. Is that good? Mm -hmm. All is well. All right. I'll keep moving. Arithmetic. What was the formula for A sub N for arithmetic? I'll give it to you right at the top test. A sub N is A1 plus n minus 1d, right? I'll give you that right at the top of the next test. You don't even need to put it on your 3 by 5. It'll be right at the top of part 1 and part 2, that formula. Also, the s sub n, we had an s sub n, which was what n over 2, a1 plus a n. That was for adding them up, right? S stands for sum. If you, so that was for arithmetic. That was section 12.2. Well, now we're in section 12.3. And we're talking geometric, which means, which means you multiply, right? So arithmetic was add, subtract from term to term, right? Arithmetic, we added and subtracted from term to term. Geometric, you multiply from term to term. That's the difference between a geometric sequence, which we're looking at now, and arithmetic, which we did last time in 12.2. So geometric, you multiply from term to term. So what's the formula? Here it is. A sub n equals, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be exactly like this one, except everything is cranked up one level, and R replaces D. So what do I mean? All the operations, all the connections between the things are one level higher. So instead of A1 plus, what's one level higher than plus? Do you know what I mean by that, by level higher? What's the first thing you ever learned to do in math? Did you start off with long dividing? No, you, what was the first operation you ever did in math? Adding, huh? And then you did subtracting. You got a little older and you did multiplying and dividing. You got a little older, you did powers. And that's also what we do with the PEMDAS, right? PEMDAS, please excuse me, dear Aunt Sally. Right? You don't need, we don't have any parentheses here, so I'll just get rid of that. I'll do the MDOS, right? Exponents. Multiplying, dividing, or below that, adding, subtracting is the bottom, right? That's reflecting a hierarchy, levels of operations. So adding, subtracting is the bottom, multiplying, dividing above that, and powers above that. What does all that mean? Well, they're, they're in that hierarchy level because multiplying is repeated adding, isn't it? If I go uh, 4 times 3, that means adding 3 4 times. Multiplying is quick, repeated adding. And powers, what's 2 to the 3rd power mean? M repeated multiplying. You ever thought, you ever stayed up late at night, thought about how the operations connect to one another? Probably not, right? That's what the weird math teachers do. That's what, that's what I'm paid to do for you. So, 
Um, yeah, so, so powers are repeated multiplying. Multiplying is repeated adding. See how the hierarchy is by quick repetition, more powerful operation. It says I can do that lower one, just snap, right? I can add, I can add three, 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 four times real quick, four times three, bang. Multiplying does it faster, huh? That's how they are in the hierarchy, and dividing is also repeated subtraction. Anyway, so what? What does alpha do with anything? Well, what that means is geometric is one level higher operationally than arithmetic because from term to term you multiply rather than add subtract. So we should expect the formulas, the connections, the operations in the formulas to all be one level higher. So, okay, what am I talking about? Well, here we go. Here's the A sub N formula. A sub N is A1, but instead of plus, it's going to be times because that's a level higher. And now, um, the, you, you could put this D first. It doesn't matter if the D is in the back or in the front. D and minus 1 like that. Well, instead of D, who plays the role of D in the geometric world? R. R, it's kind of like the D. And instead of times N minus 1, like in the arithmetic, what's the higher level of times? Power. N minus 1. There it is. Anyway, you, don't, you can just write it down... Well, you don't even need to write it. It'll be on the top of the test for you. But there you go. That's why it's the case. There's the arithmetic. And we're also going to have an S sub n, which um, is A1 times 1 minus R to the n over 1 minus R. We're not using that yet, but we will in a minute. So there we go. So there's, a, there's an A sub n and an S sub n for both arithmetic and for geometric, I'll give you all four of those, and one more to come in a minute too, well, in about half an hour. One more to come. I'll give you all five, it'll turn out, at the top of the exam, part one and part two, so you don't even need to put them on your three by five card. Just got to know how to use them. All right, well, let's, let's use it then. So what are, they, what are they wanting in this problem? They're wanting A sub N, aren't they? And this is geometric. So I'm going to grab this formula right here, the A sub N geometric. And say, okay, it's A1 times R to the N minus 1. So it's A1, which is 3, that's the first term, uh, times R. What's R? Well, that's the negative 8 to the N minus 1. Done. That's all they want from you. Is that okay? Questions on that one? I'd also, I, again, I don't like magic. I like to show you where things come from. If you guys got that copy down, I'd like to show you. I think you can see it pretty easily. You guys are sharp. You'll be able to see it real quick, I think, if I just point to a couple things. That, that formula is right. You'll be able to see it easily. Look back here. See, see when we came up with the numbers? Remember the formula is, what is it? It's, it's A1, R to the N minus 1. That's how you find the nth term. So it's uh, 3 times negative 8 to the N minus 1. So look, look right here. Here... Here's the first term. Here's the second term. And what are the second? Negative 24. What does that come from? That's 3 times negative 8 to the 1, right? 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. And, and, the, and the next term, the third term, 192, what, where did that come from? 3, negative 8 squared, right? Because we had, we had two negatives eight, two negative 8s multiplied that made the 192. It's negative 8 squared. So do you see the relationship? The third term has a 3 and negative 8, 1 lower. Do you see that? So it has the 3 and the negative 8, 1 lower, huh? There's 1 less negative 8 multiplied, just like we were doing the arithmetic. That's why they both have the n minus 1, because the frog lily pad thing, right? When you start on the first lily pad, you only need one jump to get to the second, two jumps to get to the third, three jumps to get to the fourth, right? The number of jumps is always 1 less than where you land. So that's why n minus 1, negative 8's multiplied. Do you see why it's in the power zone? Because it means that many negative 8's multiplied. Because this is a multiplying deal for geometric. All make sense? That's where that comes from. Okay. All right, let's try this. I think, I think this test might be, I think it definitely is easier than the last one. This material I think you'll find easier. and I think the average on the exam is always higher, so that's encouraging. Get a good score on this exam, and then the final will replace your lowest, so there's good opportunity for great improvement right here at the end. So 
try that one. And I want to take the exam just to help out just the day we get back from Thanksgiving. No, I'm just joking. Be- because that would be a hard time. I'm going to put it off a little bit. after the. It's, going to, it's not going to be that week we get back. I want to put it the week, two weeks after things. I'm going to push it back a day from the schedule. It's going to be the 5th. I want to make sure you all do well and give a little time there. So December, I'm going to push back the exam from the schedule to December 5th, which is not the week we get back from Thanksgiving, but the week after that on Tuesday, December 5th. Because many don't study over Thanksgiving, I understand. I'm not going to be doing work over Thanksgiving either. Okay, so try to find the, um, just get all the way down to the fifth term. So the first term is negative 9. Then you just go times 4, times 4, times 4. Use your calculator. Five seventy six. Wait a minute, they're supposed to be negative, huh? Mm-hmm. They should all be negative. And one more. Twenty three oh four? Negative? Twenty three oh four? Fifth term. So that's the first thing they want, a sub five, fifth term. And then they're gonna ask for the a sub n formula. Also, so we know that that's a one times r to the n minus one. So that's a one negative nine times r, which is four to the n minus one. And there we go. Good enough on these. I think you'll be able to move through these pretty easily. They're gonna get a little more tricky here in a minute. Can I move on? You just plug in uh, the uh, five to find the fifth formula in place of that. You know, you totally could. Yeah, if you wanted to, instead of just doing all five like I did, you could write the formula and just plug in five. That would give you the, that would jump you right to the minus 2304 also. Yeah, good, good observation, Michael. Yeah, if you want to just plug in five and skip all this and just say, look, I'm just going to write down the formula and then I'm going to put the five in right there, minus nine times four to the five minus one, so minus nine times four to the fourth, Hit the buttons on your calculator, you get minus 2304. You get right to the fifth term. That is true. Either way. Just get the formula, plug it in, I mean. Okay, so, so, okay, so they go three, and then three, four, actually, let me bring it down here. So the, fir- the first term is three, followed by three-fourths, followed by 3 sixteenths, and on it goes like that. So, um, can you uh, do this? Find the R first. Let's just, let's, let's don't mess around. Let's just find the R. And how do we, how do we find the R? Second term divided by first term, the ratio, second term divided by first term. Second term over first term. That good? So, whoops. Give a little more room here. Second over first. Three-fourths over three, like that. Okay. And then we, um, and then you, you make that, that three over one, and you flip it up, right? So we get three fourths times one third. The threes cancel. So the R is one fourth. We all good there. On that makes sense. So the R is one fourth. Okay. So now let's write down the formula. A sub n 
is A1 times R to the N minus 1. Give you that right at the top of the test. So, okay, can we use that now? So A sub N is A1. What's A1? Three. First, first means the first term. Three. Times R. R is one-fourth to the N minus 1. So there's the formula by which we can get any, any term we want. And now which one are they asking for? Sixth term. So now plug in N equals 6. So we get 3, 1 fourth to the 6 minus 1. So which is 3, 1 fourth to the 5, huh? So then just use your calculator. And um, so really what this is, this is 3 over 1. So this, this is 3 times 1 to the 5th over 1 times 4 to the 5th. Everybody see that? 1 to the 5th over 4 to the 5th. Like that, make it a fraction. Everybody see what I did there? So that 1 fourth to the 5th means the 1 on the top to the 5th and the 4 on the bottom to the 5th. And the 3 in the front is 3 over 1, right? So then that ends up, 1 to the 5th is just 1. So that's just 3 over whatever 4 to the 5th is. 1,024? Yeah, 25, not 25, 24. I said it and wrote it different. 3 over 1,024. That's the uh, sixth term. Is that good? Or see how I did that? Anything I can answer on that one? So found the R, second term over first, put it in, plugged in 6 for N, found the nth term. Sixth term. All right. Okay. So find the tenth term of that sequence. Let me give you a pattern so we can, and I bet you see it. If I just point to it, you'll see it. So we can just jump to the end. So 0 0.5, 0 0.05. 0 0.005, dot, dot, dot. Can we just jump to the 10th term by just following the yellow brick road, just following the pattern? This is the first term, second term, third term. I want to jump to the 10th term. So can you look at, can you follow the pattern and just jump right to it without any formulas or anything in between? Do you know what I mean? First term has one zero in the front. Second term has one zero in the front and then one other total of two zeros, if you count the one in the front, which is technically an optional zero. Third term has a total of three zeros. So the tenth term is going to have ten zeros, huh? If you count the one in the front, which is really optional, actually. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros. And if I let me put that right there, nine zeros, and then one zero here. So the zero in the front, and then I have nine zeros. That's what the tenth term has got to be, just by following the pattern, right? So save some effort there. All right, I'm going to move on if you're okay with that. Okay, so negative two two-thirds, negative two-ninths, two-twenty-sevenths, and on you go. All right, so take that one, try that one, and um, so come up with a formula. So the main thing needs the R, don't you? you Got to find that R, the ratio. So take the second term divided by the first term, find that ratio. So R is second term over first term. So second term over first term. Two-thirds over negative two.
Good. And then make that negative 2 over 1. Flip it up. So we get 2 thirds times 1 over negative 2. Good there so far. The 2's cancel. And we get negative 1 third. R is negative 1 third. Okay, so now we can write the formula, huh? Formula is a sub n is a1 times r to the n minus 1. So a1, what's a1? N right here, it's first term. Negative 2 times r, which is negative 1 third to the n minus 1. That's all they want, it's that formula. That's what they want in these boxes here. The negative 2 and the negative 1 third. The a1 and the r. All's well? And move on. Questions? Okay, so they're giving me the fifth term and the r. That's weird. And they want the a sub n formula. The a sub n formula, remember, is a1 times r to the n minus 1. So I need a1, don't I? I somehow need to find a1. How can I find a 1? What am I going to do? They're telling me the fifth term is 81. The fifth term is 81. Anybody have any ideas? They're giving me the fifth term. I need the first term. If normally you find numbers ahead of big A1 by multiplying it, couldn't you just divide it by the right and stuff? Good idea. You just go backwards, walk backwards by dividing. Totally. That, that's one really good way. I'll give you two ways. That's a, that's a really good way. So the, the a sub 5, the fifth term, is 81, and we would like to walk backwards to find a sub 4, a sub 3, a sub 2, and finally a sub 1. We want to get back to the first term, huh? So yeah, if, if r is negative 3, if they're multiplying by negative 3, to go to the right, that means to go to the left, you divide by negative 3, don't you? So divide that by negative 3, you'll get negative 27. And then divide by negative 3 again, you'll get positive 9. And then divide by negative 3 again, you'll get negative 3. And then divide by negative 3 one more time, you'll get positive 1. There it is. A1 is positive 1. Does that make sense? Just walked it backwards. Divided instead of multiplied to go backwards. The other way, I'll say or. Or you could just use the formula. A sub n is A1 times R to the n minus 1. There's the formula, right? And you could say, look, A5 is 81. So if I plug in 5, like that, see I plugged in 5 for n right here, put in 5, and right there put in 5. What is a 5? 81. That's what they're telling me. A5 is 81. Is a 1, you should calculate on this, this will be minus 3 to the 4th, which is positive 81. Divide by 81. A1 is 1. So that's another way. Either way, either by using the formula, plugging in 5 for n, because you know what A5 is, and then just solving for A1, or by just walking backwards by dividing, because they gave you the fifth term, walk backwards and find the first term. So the A1 is 1, so now we've got the entire formula, which is... A n is a 1, r to the n minus 1. So it means a n is a 1, which is 1, times r, negative 3, to the n minus 1. There we go. Is that good? All that? Questions? Okay, so this time, they're giving me the second term is 8. They're not telling me the third term. And they're telling me the fourth term is 1,800. They got a lot bigger. So, um, and they want the formula. So I, I got to find the R. 
I got to find what's being multiplied from term to term. So what do you think? How can we figure that out? Any ideas? It's kind of weird they're giving me a gap like that. Just A2 and A4. Any idea? How can we find R? What can we do? What's that? Use the formula. Yes, yeah, so the formula, which is a n is a one r to yeah. Let's try the formula first off. A n equals a one r to the n minus one. Do I know a one? No, no. That's going to need to stay a one. Do I know r? No, that's the whole thing I'm trying to find. Huh? I don't know r. But I can plug in five still, or four, four. Well, I could plug in 4, right? And I'd say A4 is, is like that. And what is A4? 1,800 is A1 times R to the third. But do you see the problem? There's two unknowns. I don't know A1. I don't know R. I can't really, that's not going to go anywhere, will it? See the problem? That's not like the last one. On the, the difference on the last one, I knew what um, I knew what R was, right? We already had R. How did I get R in the last one? Well, they gave me two. What did they give me? Um, oh, they just told to me right in the beginning. They just said, "Hey, here's R." So I had R, and it was all good. But I don't know R this time, and I don't know A one. There's two things I don't know, so I can't really use the formula yet, can I? So that won't quite work. What else? What else y'all think? Whatever R is, it's been multiplied here times R, right? So you could call this eight R, couldn't you? Because it's eight times R. It's eight times R. Whatever I don't know what R is, but whatever it is, this next one is eight times R. Because whatever R is, that's what you multiply by every time, right? Okay, so what? Well, and then for the next step, you're going to multiply by R again. So you could call this one, although it's 1,800, it's also 8R squared. Because it's another R. You take 8R times another R, and you get 8R squared. So in other words, 8R squared must be 1,800. Now I can solve for R. Do you see that? So if you have two jumps, that just means times R twice. In other words, R squared. If you're at A, A times r times r, 8 times r squared, must be the 1800. Do you all see that? So I can solve that little equation for r. Does that make sense? r is the thing we multiply every time. So from the 8 times r times r, r squared, 8 times r squared must be the 1800, two jumps away. So solve that little thing, divide by 8 r squared, what's that? 900, 450, 225. And then root it, right? R is 15. R is 15. They're multiplying by 15 every week. How could we double check if that's right? We could say, let's try it. Times 15, 8 times 15. This should be uh, a 120. And then times 15 again. Is it 1,800? I sure hope so. Yes, it is. So we know we got it right. It's multiplying by 15 every time. I verified it. it. Takes me from 8 to 1800 in two steps, multiplying by 15 every time. Everybody see how I found that? Bless you. Everybody good with that? Okay. And so we, now we can, the final thing they want is the formula. Now that's easy for us. So the formula. Oh, wait a minute. Is the formula? We still got to get A1. Yeah, how am I gonna how am I gonna get a one? What do I do? Good, good. Yeah, take a two and take one step backwards. Remember how we take a step backwards is dividing. So if 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 from if you're multiplying by fifteen every time, then to take a step backwards to a one, you'll divide by fifteen. So eight divided by fifteen must be a one, huh? Is that okay? Everybody said? If you take 8 over 15 and you go times 15, 
you'll, you'll get 8, huh? The 15s will cancel. Everybody see that? It's correct. There. So now we've got it. This is a hard one. So now we've got it. So a n is a 1, r to the n minus 1. I did all that work because I had to find a 1, which is 8 15s, and I had to find r, which is 15, so that I could have the formula. There's the formula for that one. Little trickery there. Questions on that? That good? All right, I'm going to keep moving here. All right, there we go. We're adding up a bunch of terms now. Adding up a bunch of terms. So, there, here's where we need that. See how they have plus signs all of a sudden? They're not just being listed with commas. Everybody seen that? Just like the last section, there's two things you do. You do the A sub n when you have commas, and you do the S sub n when you have plus signs. And your S stands for sum, adding them up, right? So, we are adding these up clearly, so we, we go to the S sub n formula. For geometric, and I wrote it out a minute ago, and that is, it's, uh, what is it? A1 times 1 minus R to the n over 1 minus R. So there's the S sub n formula for geometric, which is a little different than the S sub n formula was for arithmetic Tuesday, section 8, or 12.2. Okay, so what do we do with this thing? Well, um, let's figure out what's A1 first off. A1? A1's just first term, right? Just the one ninth there. We all good with that? And then what's the R? Can we figure out the R? How are we going to find the R? Yeah, second term divided by first term. Seven-ninth over one-ninth, right? Second over first. Grab this, flip it up. Seven-ninth times nine over one. Nines cancel. R is seven. We good? Am I racing ahead? So R, R is always second term over first term. Second term over first term. So R is 7. We get to there. Everybody good? Now, I can do this, the 1 minus 7, I can, I can subtract that and get negative 6, but I cannot subtract the 1 minus 7 in on the top because this one has an in power on it, so it has to stay as it is, huh? So, so, so what? Well, then I get 1 ninth times 1 minus 7 to the n over negative 6, and then I can just multiply those two. They're just both denominators. They can just multiply together. And so S sub n is 1 over minus 54, 1 minus 7 to the n. Are we doing okay so far? 6 times 9, 54, negative 6 times positive 9 is negative 54 in the denominator. We good to there so far? Now, are we done? Is this it? Well, yes and no, really no. Yeah, that's, that's a fine answer, but it doesn't fit the look they're, they're asking you to give it. See how they want... They want something in the front of the parentheses. That's good. We got this, minus 154. And then they want something to the n power in the front and the minus 1 in the back. I got the 1 in the front and the n power thing in the back. I got to turn that around, don't I? Got to switch the order on those two. So what does that mean? Can I just do that? Can I just, like, switch the order? I'll bring it up here for a second. So you understand what we're doing now? We've really got the right answer. It's kind of like taking a multiple choice test. You've got the right answer, but the multiple choice answers sort of look different. You're trying to figure out which one's the same as what you've got. That's kind of where we're at. So right now we've got 1 over minus 54, 1 minus 7 to the end. And we can tell by this answer box thing that they want me to put the end thing in the front. In other words, they want it like that, don't they? 
so can I just do that? And then just everything else is the same, or do things need to change? Yeah, yeah, um, you have to multiply both by negative 1. Because when you switch the order of subtraction, everybody, everybody hear me on this. When you switch the order of subtraction, that changes the sign. That's like multiplying by negative 1, right? Just think about numbers. 7 minus 3, 3 minus 7, this is 4, this is negative 4. So you see, when you switch the order of subtraction, that effectively multiplies it by negative 1. went from 4 to negative 4, huh? So, so when I switched this order of subtraction, if they were added, who cares, right? Order of adding, you switch all day, it makes no difference. But if they're subtracted and you switch their order, you've effectively multiplied by negative 1, haven't you? Well, can you multiply by negative 1? If you do it twice. Two negative 1s is positive 1 is nothing. So if I'm multiplying this part, here by negative 1, right, this, this whole thing, then i got to multiply this whole thing by negative 1 also, which makes this positive. Now we got it. Did you follow that? So I multiply both parts of those by negative 1. Since you did negative 1 twice, you've not changed anything. That'd be like, if that's confusing for you, what if I had 3x times y? And I said, oh, I'm going to multiply them both by negative. Negative 3x times negative y. That's still positive 3xy, isn't it? Because two negatives is positive. See how if you multiply both things by negative, really you've done nothing because two negatives is really positive? Well, that's what I did here. I multiplied this guy by negative 1 and this guy by negative 1. Why? Because I needed to turn this around, and I knew that would turn him around. That switches the order of subtraction. And then this guy became positive 1 54th. There's the answer format they want. Is that okay? A little fancy algebra there at the end? Questions on that? Is that good? All right. Let's keep moving. Okay. So what is that big symbol? It's sigma, as I reminded you. What does it mean? It means the same thing it meant in the last section. What did it mean in the last section? What's that big... Sum. It's a big Greek S. It means sum. It means add these things up. So, of course, we're going to use what formula? S sub n, right? Because it's a big Greek S. We're going to use the English S. It's a sum. All right, so we're going to use the S sub n. This is geometric. How would you know? On the exam we take um, week after Thanksgiving, no, week after that, anyway, December, um, how will you know, how will you know that this is a geometric thing, not arithmetic, so you know which formula to grab? What about this equation tells you, hey, I'm geometric? See where the K is? It's in power. Geometric is a level above, right? Power. Power items. When the letter climbs into power, that's geometric for sure. It's a geometric sequence. So you go, okay, okay. Going to use the geometric, which is A1, 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R like that. Going to use the geometric. So now, let's use it. So um, here we go. A1. How do we get A1? We're going to have to crank out a few of these terms, aren't we? Because we got, we got to get A1, and we also got to get R. To get R, we're going to have to do the first and second term, right? And then divide them to get R. So what you're going to have to do is take this formula and crank out at least two terms. Probably that's all we need is two. So take this formula right here, two-thirds. I'm kind of scribbling it all up here. Two-thirds to the K. So take that formula and plug in. I'll go over here. K equals one. So that would be two-thirds to the one, or just two-thirds. Plug in K equals two. That would be two-thirds to the two, which is four-ninths. We good there? So I plugged in k equals 1, I plugged k in k equals 2. We good so far? So there's the first two terms. So the a1, that is 2 thirds. 1 minus r. Now what's r? How do I find r? Well, you know, r is always... Can you find that? Let me let you do that real quick. Find R there. Okay. 
So R is always second term over first, which is 4 ninths over 2 thirds. And then we grab the 2 thirds, flip it up, 4 ninths times 3 over 2, get to there. 3 goes into 9, 3 times. 2 goes into 4, 2 times is 2 thirds. R is 2 thirds, huh? Good there. So there's my R. So this is 2 thirds to the N over 1 minus 2 thirds. 1 minus 2 thirds to the N over 1 minus 2 thirds. A little more room there. That's a mess. We get to there so far. I'm going to have to do some making that look nicer stuff. Good so far? So I'm going to move that to the fresh screen here, if I can. So where are we at? So we have S sub n equals 2 thirds, 1 minus 2 thirds to the n. Or 1 minus 2 thirds, we do there. So now, can we do some cleanup? Let's start. Um, oh, you know what? Actually, let me, here, I got a good idea. Um, Basically, on these, let me help because these are these are kind of hard, and they, they're, they're, I mean, you can get to here, and and, and there's, there's a little trickery to get to the end. So, what we're going to always do is just multiply the two denominators. So I'm going to take this three and go boom, boom. Why? Because those are two fractions. Top multiplies top, and bottom multiplies bottom. So I'm going to take that three and distribute through. What do I get then? On the top, it's two times one minus two thirds to the n. Be okay with that. On the bottom, the 3, we get 3 times 1 minus 3 times 2 thirds. Am I going too quick? So that makes sense what happened down there. So that 3 just distributed to both of those. Like that. Not good. And then these cancel. Right? And so, so what? 1 minus two-thirds to the end, and this is three minus two, isn't it? Right? Three times one is three. Three is canceled here. I got two, three minus two is one. And anything over one, we just skip that, huh? So, so then we just, it's just the numerator. And there we go. We're done. By the way, this time, they're schizophrenic. They're changing their mind. They, they're fine with the end being in the back notice all of a sudden. I don't know why they made us put the N in the front on that other one, but they're letting us just leave it this way. If they forced us by putting the N in the front, I would have to do the same trick of multiplying the 2 by negative 1 and the parentheses by negative 1. It would turn around the parentheses and make the 2 a negative 2, and that would be the same answer with the N in the front and a negative 2. Huh? But they left the N in the back this time. They keep changing their mind. So we'll just leave it as it stands. You, you guys okay with that little trickery? I know that's what, it's the really the little stuff a lot of times that gets people, I think. Everybody's got the formulas, plugs in the stuff pretty good. It's just all that little silly stuff, so I want to make sure I'm being helpful to you on that. That three multiplied, but you just let the denominators multiply on those. Questions? All right, so, yeah, we're past halfway of our time. It's a long section. So we have uh, this sequence, negative 1, minus 11, minus 121, minus 1331, minus dot, 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 minus 11 to the end, minus 1. All right, they're asking me for S sub n. These are being added and subtracted. There's, there's no commas there. They're being added and subtracted, so it's a sum. It's a, negative, it's a sum of negative things. S sub n, so use the S sub n formula, which again, for geometric, how do we know it's geometric? On a test, how would you know this is geometric? Where's the letter? Hitler's climbed into power, right? Stalin's in power. It's geometric. When the letter's in power, it's geometric. So 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. See if you can plug everything in there. That one. Ten 
lunch, Tyler? Yes. All right, we getting that okay? So what's A1? That's the, here's A1, huh, the negative 1. All right, 1 minus R, so we need R. What's R? So R is always second term over first term. So second term over first term, negative 11 over negative 1 is positive 11, huh? A regular 11. Good, so this is 11 to the N over 11. Good to there? So far, so good? Now we got to do a little bit of cleanup, which mainly means the denominator there. So it's going to be negative 1 times 1 minus 11 is negative 10. Good there? You guys okay to there? And then, what do you do? We'll put this over 1, because you got whenever you got a whole number interacting with a fraction, put it over 1 so it looks like a fraction, right? So negative 1 over 1. And then what do you do? The two denominators multiply. Really what I always do is I multiply them and put the answer over there. So you just kind of separate out that denominator. So what do you get? It's going to become negative 1 over 1 times negative 10, negative 10. And the 1 minus 11 to the end will be separate. And that's 2 negatives positive. Positive or regular 1 tenth. There we go. Is that okay? See what happened there at the end? So that's, that's pretty much what we do all the time on these things. Is we take whatever's in the denominator and just multiply it. Multiply the two denominators and put that in the front. Yeah, that's a good way to say it. Multiply the two denominators, put it in the front. That's what we do. That's the look they want. No questions? We're getting a little messier, huh? You good? I'm glad to talk about these. Okay, I'll keep moving on. Off the top of my head, if you want to come by office hours, I'd be glad to help you. But I'm just going to do it with a formula. Um, so here we go. We got a bunch of them added up. I'm going to use the S sub n formula again. S sub n is A1 times 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. Okay, so go ahead and find the A1, find the R, plug them in, see if you can, see if you can get that thing cleaned up. In the end, we will need to push the buttons on the calculator to get it, because see how they all have decimal answers there? Right, so in the end, we will need to hit the buttons on the calculator. You can do that at any stage you want. You don't have to keep simplifying. doing. You got to put in n also because you got to get a number over there. So s sub n equals so a1, what's a1? 1 7th, right? Times 1 minus r, 1 minus. So now we got to get r. What's r? Can you tell what's being done? It's multiplying by 6 every time, isn't it? If you can just see it, you don't need to you know, do it by hand. So r is always second term over first term. So second term, 6 sevenths over 1 seventh. Grab that, flip it up. So 6 sevenths times 7 over 1, they cancel 6. And, you, and sure enough, you can go times 6, times 6, right? See how the, the bottom, yeah, let me, let me help. I think it's worth talking about that for just a minute. See how the, the 7, the, the R is what's changing from term to term. See how the 7 is not changing? The seven's just been there all along. It's just always there. Not, it's not getting bigger. It's not doing anything. The thing that's changing... The, the jump from term to term is you're getting another 6 up top every time, aren't you? Right? you got times 6, times another 6, times another 6. Whereas the 7 on the bottom is not changing. So the R is always what's producing the jump, what's making the change, not what's just there as a fixture all along. 
That's not R, right? So R is just 6. Okay, so this is 6 to the n over 6. We good so far? Now, we need to put in n and hit the buttons on our calculator. And the million dollar question is what is n? Be careful. It's not 10. Why not? Why is n not 10? It's close to 10, but it's not 10. You tell me, how many terms are up there? Very good. There's 11 terms. Do you all see that? Let the power be a counter for you. This is the part that tricks a lot of people. Are you all are dialed in? Listening to me? Hearing my voice? I'm not doing the wah, wah, wah. The Charlie Brown teacher voice isn't coming to you now, right? Nope. All right, hear this. This is what gets a lot of people. Is they, they'll put in 10 for n right here. It gets a lot of people. Why is it not 10? In what is n? Number of terms. n is always number of terms. There's not 10 terms there. There's 11. How do I know? Look at the power like a counter. This is 1 right here. So from here to here is 10. And this is one more. There's 11. Now you might say, oh, okay, okay, Ms. Aaron, so we just always have to grab that number and add 1. No, sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes they drop off that guy. And it is just that number. You just got to look. So there's no hard, fast rule. That's what makes this more tricky. They, they change it up like a, like a big league pitcher. It's not always the fastball. Then they mix in the curve and the slider and the knuckleball. They're trying to fool you. So you, they're, they're seeing if you can hang tough and watch close what's going on. N is always the number of terms. So you just have to look at what's going on. And if they have a term that starts before the one power, then it's one more, huh? So there's 11 terms. So watch out for that. That's the trickery. If you get through that, you'll probably get everything right. So, okay. So we almost got it now. So now the answer is going to be 1 seventh. I'm going to do one more step. 1 minus 6 is negative 5. And I'm going to actually multiply these guys together. This would be 1 over negative 35. And then at that point, I'll hit the buttons on my calculator. You could hit them earlier if you're okay with all that. I think it's probably easiest to do that much simplification by hand and do the rest on the calculator. So I'm doing my calculator, you do yours. And I'm getting, here's what came out on mine. I got one, well, no, not one point. I got one, one, oh, three, six, five, one, oh, three, six, five, six, three, oh, six, three, oh, point, four, Come on. There we go. Did you all get that? So that's a comma, comma. 10 million, 365,630. Did you guys get that? Or maybe you got a different format. Now, you might think it doesn't look like any of those answers. Well, they're only giving me the first three digits rounded. And then some kind of power thing. Are you okay with all that power thing? Remember what that scientific notation means? Times 10 to a power means move the decimal that many places to the right, doesn't it? So let's see which one is correct. First off, the thing starts 103. Actually, a 6 comes next. So it's going to round to 104. So it's not these guys. It's one of the 104s, isn't it? Which one? Well, just take, take this one first off. 104, decimal, they put it right here, and go seven places to the right. One, two, and I'm to the edge. I got five more. Those are bringing zeros, right? So what do we got? This is um, 10,400,000. Yep, that's what we got. 10,365,000 rounds to 10,400,000. That's the right answer. A, or whatever that first one is. Does that make sense there? You'll see how I came up with that? You okay with that scientific notation and all? Can you get this on your calculator? If not, come see me. I mean, 10 seconds, I can probably crank that with you. This will be on the non-calculator part, so you have to be able to do that by hand. I'm kidding. I'm right, just making sure you're paying attention. And this will obviously be on the cal graphing calculator part. All right. Now, like I said, there is a way just to type in. Your graph calculator does summation, notation. There's a way just to type it in, and it'll just give you that answer. I don't remember it off the top of my head. I'd be glad to figure it out with you in office hours. Or you could go on to YouTube and figure it out on your own, probably. So, sigma notation. Let's try that one.
I'm going to write the S sub n formula. A1, 1 minus r to the n. They want the answer rounded to three decimal places. So give it a try. So you're going to have to crank out the first two terms by hand so you can get the r. Right? See if you can get that. Oh, <laughs> you need your own point. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, first term, plug in n equals 1. So it'd be 3 sevenths to the 1. So it's just 3 sevenths. And then plug in n equals 2, and get 3 sevenths to the second, which is some number, 9 forty ninths. Good, and then we can get the r from there. The r is second term over first. Is that good? Okay, so second term over first. So 9 over 49 over 3 sevenths. Is that good? And um, second over first. So grab that, grab that one on the bottom, flip it up. 9 over 49 times 7 over 3. Good to there. And then 7 goes into 49, 7 times 3 goes into 9, 3 times. So all that work is to say it's just 3 sevenths. We might have guessed that. It's just 3 sevenths. That's fine. If you can tell, you don't have to do all this work. So the R is 3 sevenths. And the A1 is also 3 sevenths. The first term is 3 sevenths. The jump amount is 3 sevenths. Okay, so now put that into the formula. And what is the N? How many terms? Just 15, huh? It just goes from 1 to 15. Remember, this is where it starts. This is where it ends. If you go from 1 to 15, that's 15 terms. So n is 15, so let's plug everything in. So we've got 3 sevenths times 1 minus 3 sevenths to the 15 over 1 minus... If you, if you want, if you're, you can just type that whole thing in just like that. If you're good at... But that's a lot of parentheses and stuff. It, but if you're good at that, great. If It might help you to do one step of by hand simplification to make the calculator entry easier. I probably would. Yeah, I, I definitely would. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to multiply this through here. This out of the way. So I'm going to get 3 times 1 minus 3 sevenths to the 15. On the bottom, 7 times 1 minus 7 times 3 sevenths. Like that. Sevens will cancel like that. Is that good? Seven minus three, four. Denominator is just four. See how we do that? So then we get three on the top, one minus three sevenths to the fifteenth mm -hmm. over seven minus three is four. We good? And then I would just hit the buttons at that point on my calculator. So let's do that. So let's see what we get here. Just gotta be a little careful. Gotta put the three sevenths in parentheses. I'm getting point seven four nine 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 nine. They want three places, so 0 0.750, huh? Rounded to three places. Did y'all get that? Questions on that? That okay with all that mess? It's kind of messy.
No questions? Is that okay? All right, I better move on. There's more. There's bigger ones. Okay, so here we have another one. Well, let's write right, yeah, let's read right right here. One plus one fourth plus one sixteenth plus dot dot dot. So, so soccer ladies, if I if I fill all this out for you, can I and I, will, will you like sign an autograph for my? Like, we make a deal for my eleven year old daughter when I if we come out to one of the games. I'm just kidding. Maybe, uh, maybe I don't know. She she's kind of half rooting for Clovis. I'm sorry. I I know my son to my old my oldest boy took her to a Clovis game so. I'm not sure where her heart really is. You know, I was telling her, I, I, I said, I know these girls. I'm at City. And she's like, hello, Dad. You know, so, so maybe, maybe you won't sign an autograph. <laughs> All right, so anyway, um, let me, I have a question for you. Could I throw trash in the trash can in a certain plan? Let me grab some trash here. Some um, old syllabus from the first day of class here. So, um, okay, I'm going to throw trash in the trash can. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it in the trash can, um, some certain plan. Like I can say, all right, here it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do like a piece, little piece of paper. Every 10 seconds, I'm going to throw away a piece of trash in that little trash can. Every 10, what if I have like a robot or something I program? Just every 10 seconds, every 10 seconds, every 10 seconds, I'm going to throw a piece of trash in that trash can. If that robot throws the trash in the trash can, could... It throw trash in the trash can like every ten seconds for a whole hour and not have the trash overflow. Whole hour. Is that possible? No. Could trash be thrown in that trash can for a whole hour and the trash not overflow? No. I ask you this question. Point nine bar, that means point nine is forever, right? Point nine is forever. Okay. What is that? Is it is is that equal to one? Is that equal to one? Is it, is it close to one? It's close to one. It's really close to one. It's not exactly the same as one. Yes, it is, actually. It's exactly the same as one. There's not a skosh of difference between it and one. It's another way to write one. Not, not close. Not maybe, not approximately, not sort of, but completely and totally exactly the same without any difference at all. How can I say that? Because the dots go forever, and forever does some things you're not expecting. That's what we're seeing in this section here at the end where they have the infinite sums. How can I say it's forever? Well, let me, let me ask you this. If you say it's different, let me present it. There's like three different proofs of it. I'm, really, I'm, I'm speaking the truth here. This is, this is true. 0.9 bar is 1. There is no difference. How can I say that? Well, first off, if you think there's a difference, like I would too if I hadn't seen this before, I would say, no way, they're different. Well, if two things are different and you subtract them, you better not get 0, right? If I subtract two things and I get the answer 0, what does that mean about those two things? Let's, we all with that? Let me say that one more time. If I subtract two numbers and the difference is zero, what does that mean about those numbers? They are exactly the same. So let's subtract 1, which is 1.0 or whatever, minus 0.9 bar. Let's subtract them, and we'll see that we get nothing. Now, how, how can you subtract? The 9s go forever. How can you even subtract? Right, they go forever, so you, you can't. So just, just do one of the 9s. 1.0 minus just one of the 9s would be 0.1, right? That would be the difference. But the nines don't stop after one pot. Well, okay, okay, just do two of them. If there were just two nines and you subtracted, one dollar minus 99 cents, right? You get oh one, one right? But the nines don't stop after two places. Okay, 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 I know they go forever. What if there was three of them? You'd get oh oh one one if they stopped after three places. But they don't stop after three places. They go forever. Oh, okay, okay. So if there were four places, then you would get oh, 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 one. Right, okay, if they stopped after four places, but they don't stop after four places. So they actually go forever. So that one, when you subtract them, that one is going to finally come after what? After, when does that one come? When you subtract them, right? 1.0 minus 0.9 is forever. Right, the one doesn't come after four places. Because they don't stop after four places. It doesn't come after five or six 
or seven. When does that one come? It comes after. It was like a Disney movie. It comes after forever. It comes after forever. What if I said, I'm going to give you, I'm just feeling generous. I'm going to give everybody $100. And I'll give it to you after forever. What am I saying? That's another way of saying never. So when does that one come? Never. So if the one never comes, what's the difference? Zero. And if the difference between two things is zero, they are the same, aren't they? I can prove it to you one other way. I don't know if that was satisfying at all. 0.9 bar forever. Do you guys know, what is one divided by three on your calculator? What is it? 0.3s forever. 0.3 bar, right? So if I take that, that's a true equation there, right? You with me? One third exactly equals, not close, but exactly equals 0.3s forever, doesn't it? Right? 0.3s forever. 0.3s forever, okay? So if I take this thing and I multiply, I'm going to show you one more proof that it really is one. If I take this true equality, one third exactly equals 0.3s forever, and I multiply both sides by 3, what is 3 times 0.3s forever? 0.9s forever, right? And what is 3 times 1 third? 1. Teru. 0.9s forever is exactly. So I show all these examples to say the world of the infinite is interesting and it's surprising. It does some things that you wouldn't think. An infinite sum can be finite. And a, an infinite number that goes forever can have a finite sum and be exactly 1.0. 0.9s forever is exactly 1.0. All right, with all that said, let's go back and answer this. See how the dot, dot, dot? That's the infinite sum. So I got a new formula for you. This is the fifth and the last. This, will, this also will I'll put at the top of the test for you. A1, it's a nice easy one. A1 over 1 minus R. See the infinity down here? That's the sum of infinite terms. But this is only usable. It's only true. How about I just say it's only true? It's only true for R between negative 1 and positive 1. So whenever you're about to use this formula, you first got to verify, make sure that R is really between negative 1 and positive 1. If R is not between negative 1 and positive 1, if R is not between negative 1 and positive 1, then we say the series diverges or the sum diverges meaning it takes off to infinity. It doesn't, it doesn't have a finite sum. It diverges. It's divergent. All right, so what does that mean? Let's, let's do this problem. So S sub infinity, A1 over 1 minus R. Here we go. What's A1? A1 is the first term. Let's find R. You know how to find R. Second term over first term. That's easy. That's just one-fourth, huh? Am I going too quick? So A1 is 1. And the R every time is a fourth, right? All right, so then the S sub infinity is A1 over 1 minus R. And so A1 is 1, and the R is a fourth. Is that good to there? So that's 1 over, what is 1 minus a fourth? 3 fourths. And then you can just grab that, flip it up, 4 thirds, we're done. So that infinite sum of numbers adds up to be 4 thirds. Finite sum. Infinite sum of positive numbers makes a finite total. Kind of surprising. Calculus is all about that. You're headed to calculus. It deals with the limits towards infinity. It's all about infinite kind of things. So four-thirds on that one is the total. Oh, I never verified. Remember, the R had to be between negative 1 and positive 1, or we can't even do this formula. It is. R is a fourth. It's a fraction between negative 1 and positive 1. Right? R has to be a fraction, right? If, if negative 1's here and positive 1's there, R is one-fourth is, you know, between them. So that's good. Is that okay? Make sense? So let's try another one. 
So ask your friends and neighbors if 0.9 bar is different than 1. And you can prove it to them with the 1 third equals 0.3 forever and multiply both sides by 3. All right, anyway, so there we go. Um, how are you going to know to use the S of infinity formula on the test when you see this in a couple weeks? The dot, 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 right? So the dot, it has no ending point. The dot, dot, dot means it's going forever. So it's going forever. So S sub infinity is A1 over 1 minus R. So find A1, find R. Make sure the R is between negative 1 and positive 1. If R is not, then you just say diverges. See how they have that option down here, series diverges? If R is not between negative 1 and positive 1, don't use the formula. Even though the formula would give you a number, it's bogus. Just say the series diverges. So check R. Find R, second term divided by first term, right? Should be getting R is negative 1 fourth, so R is good. R is usable. R is second term over first term. So second term over first term. Negative one half over two. Like that. We could put this over one and flip them up. Negative one half times a half. Negative one fourth. That good for R there? So there's R. Now, and, and that, is, that is, by the way, a number between negative 1 and positive 1, huh? So it's okay. Green light, we can use the formula. So A1 is 2 over 1 minus R. What's R? I'm going to let you finish that. There's a, there's a mistake lots of people make right at this point. So I want to give you a chance... So I can help you if you're making that mistake. So notice there's a subtraction symbol right in the formula, huh? And then R is, in this case anyway, also negative. So we got the double negative thing. Just be careful. Double negative so it's going to be positive, right? So just watch out. So 1 plus a fourth, that's 5 fourths. Is that okay? Because 1 is 4 fourths. 4 fourths and 1 fourth, 5 fourths. Grab that, flip it up, so it's 2 times 4 over 5, 2 over 1, 8 fifths, done. Is that okay? I go too quick there at the end, is that all right? So watch out for the double negative thing, that gets a lot of people, right? Because the formula itself has a subtraction, and then often R is also negative, so you got the double negative, it's add 4 fourths and 1 fourth, 5 fourths, flip it up. 2 over 1 times 4 over 5, 8 fifths. Questions on that? Is that okay? We good? All right. Okay, how do we know, how would we know this one's infinite? The infinity, huh? Okay, okay. They want me to use, the, see the infinity up here. They want me to use the S sub infinity formula, which is A1 over 1 minus R. So you've got to find R. How are we going to find R? Well, we've got to find the first two terms. So n equals 1, or k, I guess they're using k this time. k equals 1. What's the first term? 4 times 1 third to the 1 minus 1, 4 times 1 third to the 0. Anything in the 0 power is 1. 4 times 1, 4. So that's the first term. And then the second term, k equals 2. 4 times 1 third to the 2 minus 1. 4 times 1 third to the 1. That's 4 over 1 times 1 over 3. 4 thirds. Second term is 4 thirds. And so then the R, second term over first term. Second term, so this is first, second, second term. Whoops. Over first term. Yeah. 
put that over 1, grab it, flip it up. 4 thirds times 1 fourth cancels. R is 1 third. So can we do it? Green light or red light? Is R between negative 1 and positive 1? Sure. It's got to be a fraction, in other words. That, that's a fancy way of saying positive or negative fraction. It is. One third fraction. So we can do it. So here we go, then. S sub infinity is A1 over 1 minus R. It's A1. What's, what's the first term? 4 over 1 minus R. R is 1 third. What's 1 minus 1 third? One whole pi, and I ate 1 third of it. How much is left? Two thirds, grab it, flip it up. Four over one times three over two. What is that? Twelve halves? Six? Six. Good on that. So you handle the six. So whenever they give us that sigma notation, we just crank out the first two terms and everything else flows from that, right? See how we always see how I've always handled the sigma notation? I just find k equals one, k equals two. Then I can get my r and I can do everything from there. Okay. So good, these aren't bad. We'll be able to do these. All right, last, last concept in this section. They want to give you a formula and have you from the formula determine if it's arithmetic, geometric, or neither. So let me remind you of these. Arithmetic, what's an arithmetic sequence? You add, subtract, term to term, right? So arithmetic, you add, subtract, term to term. Whereas geometric... You multiply or divide, same thing. Dividing is upside down, multiplying, term to term. Multiply or divide, term to term. Okay. But what does that mean about like a formula? Well, the, um, the formula, let me write that for you here. So the formula is linear. Do you know what linear means? Like... Um, a times n plus b, into the first power, in other words. For geometric, the formula has n in power, like a to the n times b or something. n's in power, here n's linear. So, n plus 3, what do you think? Arithmetic, geometric, or neither? arithmetic. Yeah, and, and by the way, if you're ever unsure, you can just crank out a couple terms. You don't have to write down my little thing. You can just say, look, n plus 3 is the formula. What if n is 1? 1 plus 3, 4. What if n is 2? 2 plus 3, 5. What if n is 3? Uh, 3 plus 3, 6. So it goes 4, 5, 6. So what's happening from term to term? Is it adding the same number or multiplying the same number? Adding. So, of course, it's arithmetic. You can just do that, too. Just crank out three terms, which will give you two jumps, right? Two gaps. Three terms will give you two jumps. And then you can just see if they're adding or multiplying every time. And you'll know. Or neither. Some of them do neither. We'll see a neither one in a minute. All right. So, the formula is 4n squared. If you look back to what I said, if you have linear, meaning first power on n, that's arithmetic. If n itself is in power, that's geometric. I have nothing about n squared. Right, that'll be neither. This is actually going to be neither. It's neither arithmetic nor geometric. You, you don't have to use my little form. Again, you could just find it out. If I let n be 1, 4 times 1 squared, get 4. If you let n be 2, you get 4 times 2 squared. 4 times 4 is 16. If you let n be 3, you get 4 times 3 squared. 4 times 9, 36. So what's happening? Add 12, add 12? No. It's not adding 12, adding 12. Is it multiplying? Oh, times 4, times 4? No, 16 times 4 is not 36. It's 64. See, it's neither adding nor multiplying. It's neither. Make sense? That good? Can I move on? So they're giving me 6, 8, 11, 15, da, da. What's happening right here? Add 2, add 3, add 4, right? So is it adding the same number every time? No. It's adding a different number every time. Is it multiplying the same? No. So it's neither. That's neither arithmetic nor geometric. Ar arithmetic means adding the exact same number every time. 
Geometric means multiplying the exact same number every time. That one's changed.